Happy New Year to you. Uh, maybe you're in a different part of the country that you beat me to it, but it's always a fun time, I think, to watch. Um, be here in the West Coast, we're a little bit behind the world. Many people get to the New Year before we do. But it's so fun to see the different celebrations different countries do. And I hope that you've had a great holiday season, that you and your family are well, and looking forward to a brand new clean slate year. I know that I am. Let's go to Lord in prayer as we have part two of our series. Dear Gracious and Heavenly Father, you are so wonderful to us. Thank you for this holiday season. Thank you for the birth of Christ. Thank you for a new and fresh year. Lord, um, there's many things that we can look back and just be glad to enter into new year. At the same time, we don't know what this new year comes and uh, upholds before us, Lord, but you are so good that through it all, we have you to lead and guide us. And I ask that you would guide us through this study, that you would give us a heart of understanding, that you would give us um, the interest, Lord, to draw near to you, to follow hard after you, as it says in the Psalms. And I ask, Lord, that you would give us your peace and your leading and guiding in this new year. In Jesus' name, amen. So, ladies, we talked uh, in the last study about scheduling with God's purpose. And now we're going to get into wrapping it up a little bit and getting some practical tips on that scheduling because it is so important. So this is what happened to me last year. I had a planner and the stickers and um, all sorts of different things. And at the turn of the new year last year, usually take the holidays to kind of write it in it and get it ready for the year. I had it all decked out. I like the month out of you. So I had stickers of dates and um, things marked in there, birthdays and anniversaries. Of course, those don't change. But come about mid-March, when things really started to shut down and the world started to go into a scare, if you will, I less and less started looking and using, it my, using my planner. Well, then come the middle of the summer, I looked and I thought, I set it aside and it's got several books on top of it and I wasn't using it at all. I'd become discouraged because event after event that was in my planner, they were all canceled. You know, stay at home, stores closed, schools closed, churches open closed. And so I just set it aside. And to be quite honest, I did not use it. I looked at it a couple times, but for the rest of the year. So my planner was in effect, it was filled in, but it was of no use to me. It was of no interest to me, all because of what was going on in life. And so I didn't even want to get into the next new planner, but I've spent some time filling it in and I'm excited about the next year. And, you know, after going through 2020, we can look at a new year and say, okay, Lord, you know, no matter what may come our way, you're still in control. And I still need to have a purpose about my day, about my life, about my family. So um, here's the first thing I want to throw at you as a question which is what is the first thing you should always schedule in your day? I'm going to give you a clue. David talked about it in Psalm. Psalm 63, 1 and 2. O God, thou art my God. Early in the morning will I, excuse me, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. So this verse um, struck me quite a long time ago, but I studied it more recently because everybody else can have a different time and place of your own personal devotions and walk with the Lord. But I want to admonish you ladies over and over in the Bible, characters and stories and real people that we look up to, it says that they sought the Lord early. And while it's not a sin or wrong to have your devotion time another time of day, there have been day after day where maybe I didn't get to it till later or sometimes even the next morning. And then I read a verse that I think, oh, Lord, I needed this verse yesterday or early in the day. If I had only had my morning devotion, that verse could have sustained me throughout what happened or what came my way in the day. And so David talks about early will I seek thee. So here's a question. It says, my soul thirsteth for thee. Ladies, do you thirst and long for the Lord to be close to him? Now you might right away say, no, I've lost it. The great thing is you can get it back at any moment. You start reading the word of God, 
start praying and communing with the Lord, listening to and singing songs of the Lord, and the Lord will give you that desire back. It's amazing. I love how he does that. But here's a great thought that came to me last week. So it says that if I seek the Lord early, if I'm walking with him, verse two is very interesting. It said, and it's interesting, verse one ends with a semicolon. So that was just a thought, but you've got to, you've got to continue on to finish it in verse two, which is to seek thy power and thy glory. And here's the one that really struck out to me last week. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, what's the sanctuary talking about the church, maybe back in the Bible days, a synagogue, but you know, maybe you can relate to me that you have been to a conference, it could be a missions conference. It could be um, some anniversary conference your church has. We've done, I love the Lord conference, a ladies retreat, a men's retreat that, you know, young kids or whoever might go to. There's a lot of events that maybe you have been exposed to. And you can remember one that you think, wow, when that preacher preached that message, I'll never forget it. Or I made this decision at that conference. Often conferences and retreats can be like a spiritual high that you're getting in so much information. Um, it's just filling your soul up that you didn't know that you needed. Well, David here says that if you seek the Lord early, it says you can see that power and glory like you do in church. And I thought, wow, Lord, I don't know that I've read that verse that way before. But he says, I can give you just as much spiritual nourishment, encouragement, excitement as if you were in church. Sometimes, ladies, it's you're at church and maybe there's a favorite hymn or song that the choir or the congregation are singing that you just get the chills. Maybe a tear runs down your cheek because it ministers to you so much. God says you can get that just by seeking him early. So I really admonish you put God, always put God first on your schedule in your day. And you might think, oh, you don't understand. My kids are early risers and they beat me to it. Well, as tough as it is as a tired mom trying to follow a schedule, you've got to beat them to it. You've got to set that alarm even earlier, be extra quiet as a mouse and get that time in with the Lord. It will help you throughout your day. Also, schedule your devotion time with your family separate from yours. We can often do that and think, oh, I did my devotions and it's, you know, with your whole family. And that's great. We need to do that. But do you have a personal walk with God aside from your family? Also, schedule to put godly music all throughout your day. So you're thinking, this is not what I was thinking, Miss Angie. Angie, scheduling with a purpose, God's purpose. So I'm not giving you uh, from 8 to 10, schedule this, and you know 12 to 2, schedule that. But I'm trying to put some things into your life that if you add these or include these in your daily schedule, this is God's purpose. He doesn't say, you know, at 5.15, I want this done. Um, we don't get a letter for him or a text. But God says, if you seek me early, put me all throughout your day, that he will do miraculous things in your life and in your spirit. Also, schedule time to praise and to thank God. When's the last time you went to God in prayer and you never asked for one thing? You spent the whole time, 5, 10, 30 minutes, an hour, just thanking and praising God. Ladies, I challenge you to do it. It is so important. And it's amazing. Um, as I've done that, and I, I, I try to make it a regular schedule part of my life, but even then, I still wish I, I did it more. But when I do, I'll walk away or get up and I'll think, Lord, I didn't ask you for one thing, but my spirit feels so refreshed just talking about you. And it's a miraculous thing God does in your soul and your spirit that he can refresh you just from praising him. When you stop and thank and thank God for just even little things, have you ever thanked God for water? If you thank God for the seasons, uh, if you thank God for your favorite sound, I don't know what yours is. Uh, mine's almost a tie. I love the sound of water, either a wave or a rippling brook, but I absolutely love the sound of wind. Now, wind can be eerie too, but when you can hear wind through the pine trees or wind through a palm tree, I don't know. It's, it's relaxing to me. I love the sound of it. Maybe yours is something different, a bird or 
uh, something else. Maybe you've never even thought about it until I started talking about it. Figure out what your favorite sound is and thank God for it. He made it. It's music for you made from God. It's amazing. Things like that. We, we think music and I think the radio, a CD, um, an iPod, your phone. But have you thanked God for the music from nature? You know, if you're in the countryside or you get away and you're somewhere where it's really quiet, but you can hear the bullfrogs or you can hear, um, you know, different leaves rustling. It is so relaxing. Yeah, that, God, that comes from God, but have you ever thanked him for it? There's so many things to thank him for, and he doesn't even need to do it, but in my thanksgiving to him, he refreshes me. I also want to in- encourage you to schedule time to encourage others. Put in your day, in your week, make sure it's in your week, but I would ask you to put it in a few days a week, maybe even every day, to write a card, to send a Bible verse text to someone, to um, make that phone call of encouragement. Encourage others. It will change your schedule for the better when you include thinking of others. And then also, schedule time to physically go to church. Now, a year ago, two years ago, that would have sounded a little bit absurd. Schedule time to physically go to church. Well, I say that because many of us are used to just watching online, listening. And while that is good and it is meat, it is so much better for your spirit and um, that Christian fellowship that you get when you're in person. Um, Now, I'm not asking you to be unsafe. I want you to be careful in these days and times of what's going on. However, it is amazing what it does for you when you're able to see some Christian friends. Listen to this. A gentleman visiting a certain school gave out that he would give a prize to the pupil whose desk he found in the best order when he returned. But when will you return? Some of them asked. That I cannot tell was the answer. A little girl who had been noted for her disorderly habits announced that she meant to win the prize. You, her schoolmates jeered, why your desk is always out of order. Oh, but I meant to clean it the first of every week. But suppose he should come back at the end of the week, someone asked. Then I will clean it every morning. But he may come at the end of the day. For a moment, the little girl was silent. Then she said, I know what I'll do. She decided, I'll just keep it clean. You know, ladies, God wants us to live like that. It sounds silly and simple as a kid. And maybe you've got that messy child that you think, oh, you know, Lord, would you help us? I don't know if they'll ever be clean, ever be clean. But, you know, God can help any one of us at any stage of our life, no matter where we came from, which side of the tracks, which country, what color we are. God loves us all. But God wants us to live in order. Now, I'm going to ask you a question you're probably not going to like. How clean is your vehicle? Um, You're thinking, Miss Angie, that's not anything to do with scheduling. Uh, You know... But we need to have, yes, our house in order, but your vehicle ought to be in order. Uh, My husband and I, for many years, would kind of rotate, or especially when my kids are little, I would take apart their car seats and vacuum under them, get all the crumbs or whatever entered, or somehow I'm surprised how it got in the vehicle, uh, because it would build up, and it would become to almost where you couldn't get it cleaned, or you certainly didn't desire to do it because it was such a mess. Um, You know, as a Christian... When you ask someone, hey, let's let's go for a coffee or I'll drive or will you drive? It really is a shame to the Lord if your vehicle is a mess, stained up, smelly, um, just like your house. I encourage you to be a clean woman. A dirty, disorderly, unkept woman is not attractive. And it could have nothing to do with physical features. But just the fact that they don't care is not attractive. God wants you to care about you, your family, your life, the things that he's gifted you with. If your home and your vehicle is so dirty and unkept, maybe God won't let you keep it. And it's not easy to hear, 
but God wants us to do all things with excellence. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be um, win the prize for the cleanest in the world, but ladies, don't let things build up. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. So ladies, when we seek the Lord early, we'll find the Lord and it shows that you love him. But do you love him so much to take care of the things that he's given to you? Your home, your um, appearance, things that he's given you, clothes, shoes, um, your vehicle, your children, your family. Do you love God so much that you schedule to be clean in life, but also to put him first in life? I want you to remember in all of your scheduling, um, or at least to decide and to schedule to have an excellent spirit. You could be the cleanest person out there. Your planner could blow me away where it is amazing. You've got everything down to a T, the stickers and the either a bullet journal or, you know, whichever way you choose to go. I mean, it is unbelievable how much you can follow a schedule. You're clean. Nothing is ever out of order, but your spirit is not right. You know what? Most husbands and families would say, I would rather not have all that just for my mom or my wife to have a good spirit. Like I've said often before, uh, it's not worth having a wonderful meal on the table if mama ain't happy. They say nobody's happy. Ladies, change your spirit. It is possible to have the balance of having a schedule, living clean, walking with the Lord and having an excellent spirit. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not easy. I wake up sometimes and my spirit's not where it should be. There was a couple mornings ago that um, I didn't wake up on the right side of the bed, as they say. Really what it was is I needed to sleep longer. I didn't get enough sleep. And I actually had time. I woke up too early but couldn't go back to sleep. Well, thankfully, my whole house didn't know about it, but my husband knew that I wasn't happy that I didn't, you know, sleep in or get that extra sleep. And I had to make it right with him. And ladies, I encourage you to do that. Don't let a rough morning ruin your whole day. Don't let it change your spirit of who you are. It is not right and it's a sin to have everything done, but your spirit's nasty. It's not right. There's no sense in getting your schedule done if you forgot God and if you have a bad attitude. Also, remember that God is coming again, and are you ready? So you might think, oh boy, let's get ready for God. Let's make sure things are in order. Let's clean. Let's soul win. Let's reach people for Christ. But is your spirit ready in the same question? Are you ready to meet God with an excellent spirit? And here's my last question for you or a request for you. Ask God to help you with your schedule and your spirit today. That might be something you've never prayed about. You've just filled in your journal and your planner and your phone, your calendar on your own thinking, well, it's mine. I'm good. I got it. But invite God into your schedule. Invite him into your calendar and just see what God will do. It's amazing how things will change with your spirit and your schedule if you include him in it. Now, ladies, I've enjoyed this study with you. I hope that it's was been maybe a different, but a big help to you. And I would love to hear from you if maybe it challenged you or it helped you to make some different decisions in your life. Um, you know, I look forward to our different studies and this one again was very different, but I just, um, I want it for you so greatly to live a balanced life with an excellent spirit. I know you can do it because we've got God on our side. So um, I'm excited about this. This is no time than ever to do this study with the start of a new year. You could impress the Lord and your family as a changed person for 2021. So I look forward to seeing you next time and hearing back from you as well at how you're going to change and uh, start 2021 fresh. Thank you, ladies.